Hello and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here another currently inked video for this week. So what we'll do is we'll go through the pens left to right very briefly. We'll then go through them in a little bit more detail and then we'll do a writing sample. So from left to right we have the Visconti Homo Sapiens London Fog, the Visconti Homo Sapiens Caput Mundi, the Monte Grappa Extra 1930 Shiny Lines Dove, the Visconti Wall Street, and this is the limited edition version from 2006. We have a Visconti Ecstasy Dowd. We have a Classic Pens LM1 in the flame red. We have a right here Scribo 2 in the noble green. We have an Atelier Lusso, and this is an Andromeda in the King Cobra. We have a Visconti Manhattan Arco, and we have a Molteni Royal Blue Lucent's Modelo 55S. So let's look at these pens in a little bit more detail. So this is the beautiful Visconti Homo Sapiens London Fog, and this was the first Visconti uh, that set me down this path of a lot of Visconti pens and I think a lot of people lust after this pen as a growl pen and it really is a growl pen. I love the way that Visconti have used this celluloid with the blue and the grey and, and, and the white in the cap there but I also like these ribbon swirls and they're a little bit more harder to see when the pen is fully inked up with a dark ink. This is a blue ink in here but this pen really is a beautiful pen and it was the first of two pens there was this pen and the Florentine Hills which uh, set me down this path of buying a lot more Viscontis and when I say a lot more I think I had about 67 Viscontis uh, at it at my peak and I think uh, now I'm down to I think it's 57 now but you can see here in the size of my hand this is actually a really really good size pen and I love the weight of these Homo sapiens and this is why I have so many of these they are just perfect pens I prefer the demonstrators because they have the double reservoir um, they're all power vac fillers but only the demonstrators have the double reservoir in them and the non-demonstrators the ones with a single reservoir tend to hold around about one to one and a half milliliters of ink when full um, these actually hold about a milliliter more so around two to two and a half milliliters so this is why I like these and also that I can actually see how much ink I've got in the in the barrel there of the pen so the nib on this is a 23 cap palladium nib and this is a fine nib and this is the nib that I actually bought this with when I got this pen and I bought this in 2016 so uh, it's now 2019 and uh, so I've really been collecting pens for about three years now and I have a lot of pens I have accumulated or collected a lot of pens in those three years but they are also a lot of good pens as well and I think I very quickly decided um, what pens I liked and Visconti was one of them and I picked up this uh, Visconti Homo Sapiens Caput Mundi and uh, this is a beautiful pen uh, I kept looking at this and uh, this was really on only um, one website at the time which was uh, stilographcorsani.com and I kept seeing this uh, and this was in 20 I think it was 2016 it would have been around 2016 yes uh, that, that I was looking at this and this and the Corsani 90 and I decided to to buy both this one and the Corsani 90 but this is a beautiful pen I love the dark reds I love the the bronze trims I love that it's a demonstrator that it's a power vac holds two and a half milliliters of ink again hook safe lock and it has the 23 cap palladium nibs and this is a medium nib and I have really loved most of the palladium nibs now not all of them some of them do write a little bit more dry uh, I prefer the nibs that write a lot more wet 
but the majority of my palladium nibs are very wet writers to fire hose writers and then we have the Monty Grappa Extra 1930 Shiny Lines Dove. Now, I've seen this Shiny Lines in... Uh, the, the Shiny Lines are actually the lines going this way, and then there's Shiny Circles that go around the body or the barrel of the pen and the cap of the pen. And, and I've seen the Shiny Lines in a number of different Monty Grappa pens in the past, and for me... I really like that material and I've wanted to pick them up but the problem is is that they've all had silver colored sections which tarnish over time now this was a Goulet exclusive that, that Brian and Rachel did with Monty Grappa and the one thing that they requested was to have the same celluloid section as the pen and the cap and I'm so glad that they did because th this is what really made me buy this pen. Plus I wanted to try, I, I tried a couple of extra 1930 pens from friends and I actually liked how they wrote. Um, but I wanted to try a medium nib or a broad nib and in the end I got this with a medium nib. Because I wasn't too sure how the Monty Grappers wrote in terms of size but... This really is a stunning pen. I love the size. It's a piston filling uh, mechanism as well. Uh, it's got an 18 karat gold shiny lines uh, dove nib or a dove nib on there. And it really is a beauty to write with. And I would love to pick up some more Montegrappers. So I have that one inked up. But as I said, the only thing that's really putting me off are the silver sections and they tarnish over time and you've got to keep polishing them. I don't typically like seeing silver tarnish. I don't mind bronze tarnished, but silver, uh, I just do not like seeing it because it makes it look dirty. And then we have this uh, Visconti Wall Street. Now, this is the limited edition version and this is the 2006 version. I say limited edition loosely because it's a uh, limited edition run of 4,000 pens. And this is 1397. So what's the difference between the limited edition and the regular edition? So the first thing is is that the limited edition comes with a power vac. The non-limited edition comes with a converter. So that's the first thing. So you're going to get a lot more ink uh, held in here. And obviously, you also get an ink window as well. And you also get a celluloid coloured section, whereas the non-limited edition is a chrome or palladium coated section. So I prefer this pen over the non-limited edition version. You can still find these sometimes uh, on eBay. Uh, but for me, this is really good. You tend to see the the cartridge converter ones more, and they tend to be cheaper. But that's another pen that I have inked up that I do love writing with. And that's got a 1.3mm uh, palladium stub nib on it. And then we have the beautiful Ecstasy Dowd, or Ecstasy Dude, as I, I believe it's actually pronounced. Um... But I'm still going to call it Dowd because uh, I think dude sounds a little bit <laughs> common. Uh, dude, hey dude, they got an ecstasy dude. Um, but hey, it, it is what it is. Um, but the whole idea is uh, the Oud or Oud, effectively, um, is a fragrance. And you put the fragrance into the pen. So you put the perfume... It's a Western uh, um, fragrance, so you put it into there and you use the dabber and then you put some cotton fluff in here and you dab it in to scent the pen. I like the idea, but I don't tend to mix pens with perfumes or uh, eau de toilettes or, or even alcohol. Like for me, the pen is primarily a pen, so I don't fill it up at all. Um, it's a really long pen and then the filling mechanism on here is a push-pull converter and that holds about 
0.5, 0.6, 0.7 milliliters of ink. It doesn't hold a huge amount of ink, and it does run out quite quickly. But it runs out quite quickly because it's got a 23 cap palladium nib. It's a medium nib, but it's a very, very wet writing and bouncy writing nib. So for me, uh, I tend to go through ink very quickly with this pen, but I love the pen so much that I it really doesn't bother me. Um, and, and I tend to have a Visconti Travelling Inkwell with me or a Penida pen filler that I can just quickly just top it up with and uh, and, and that's fine. And then we have the Classic Pens LM1 and this is the Flame Red and it's made out of uh, what's called Diffusion Bonded Acrylic and this basically is acrylic sheets pressed together until they fuse together and you can see the effect there that you get on this. This is actually quite stunning. So for me, this is a beautiful pen. These don't go uh, for a cheap price, and I uh, paid a lot for this. Uh, I also picked up a Classic Pens LB5 as well, which I paid even more for. But these are beautiful pens. Now, the LM1 comes with an 18 karat gold Bock nib, and that is a medium nib. All of the Classic Pens come with cartridge converters, and you'll see that here but again that doesn't bother me I to be honest I actually quite like a lot of these cartridge converters because they're a lot easier to clean out uh, than than a power vac or a piston as much as I love the power vacs and pistons because they hold more ink these are a lot more easier to clean out so that's my lovely classic pens LM1 that I have inked up and then I have a Scribo 2 and this is a Noble Green and this is from right here now these I believe are now long sold out and these are pens that basically Scrittura Bolognese or Scribo have created in a partnership with John Hall uh, if you didn't know um, Scribo is is run by one of the partners which is uh, Luca Baglioni and he used to be the marketing or head of marketing at Omas before it went under. So there's a lot of history there between Omas and Luca with John Hall right here. So they partnered and uh, they've created a number, a range of pens. There was the uh, grey version of this, which was the Scribo one. There was this one, the Noble Green, and a Cardinal Red, which is the Scribo two. And now there's a Scribo three, which is the, uh, I think it's the uh, Bologna Blue, it's called. But these are really good writers. They have the same OMAS nibs, the OM81s, the extra flexibile nibs. But uh, Scribo were able to uh, acquire the um, the the actual uh, machinery from Bock that makes these nibs. And these are essentially the same OM81 nibs. Uh, this is a 14 karat gold medium flex nib. And it's a beautiful writing nib. If you ever get a chance to try one of these, do try it because they are beautiful writers. And I'm really reevaluating as as much as I have a lot of stunning pens in my collection. I do like how the pens write more than how they look, and and that that is becoming more prominent in my collection. So I'm going more for pens that write better uh, and maybe not look as nice as some of the these more expensive pens but it's just what it is I, I have to use my pens and write with my pens so for me the writing experience is actually more key than the look and, and the looks are although they originally used to be primary for me they're they're now really more secondary and the writing experience is more primary and then we have this Atelier Luso Andromeda and I handpicked this material this is the King Cobra and I had Eric at Atelier Luso make this pen for me and it's in the Andromeda shape which really is just a cylinder but you can see here this really is a beautiful beautiful pen uh, these are all of the Atelier Luso pens are at, the, at least at the moment um, cartridge converter pens um, you can see the size on this is actually pretty good. Uh, it's a, a Yovo nib, and I got this with a broad Yovo nib, 
but I really do love this pen. You can't post the caps uh, on this model. It's not designed to do so, but I just love the Andromedas uh, and also the Carinas uh, that I got from Eric. I think some of the materials are really stunning and, and the price of the pen is actually pretty good, especially for a custom pen. And then we have this Visconti and I just had to pick this one up. This is the Manhattan Arco and you can see why uh, if you like the look of the Arco Browns or even Arco Verdes, this is a pen that you will probably like the look of. And it really fused uh, my one of my two favourite brands, which is really ASC and Visconti there. So it really is um, a lovely fusing of the two brands. And I really think that it was great that both ASC and Visconti were able to do this collaboration. ASC actually provided the Arco material that they had actually purchased from OMAS when they went under, or from the liquidator, and Visconti were able to make this lovely pen. So this is a Paravac filler, and it has an ink window here. Uh, it has an 18 karat gold nib, and uh, I wonder if this is actually one of the new Visconti nibs that they are allegedly making in-house um, or if this is an ASC nib it's got the Visconti uh, imprint on the nib but this medium nib writes more like a fine or an extra fine to me um, so I'm not normally a fine or extra fine person so I would much prefer that write more like a, a medium to a broad um, but I do wonder if this is the shape of things to come with the newer Visconti nibs that are coming out uh, in 20, later 2019 and 2020, the gold nibs. But I guess we'll just have to wait and see on that one. And then last but not least, we have uh, the stunning Molteni. And this is the Royal Blue Luchens Modelo 55S, which is a bit of a mouthful. So the reason why it's called Royal Blue is this part here in, on the cap uh, and also on the filling knob and on the section here is the royal blue material or blue royale that Omas used to use and then the body here uh, that is semi-translucent is um, the Luchens material from Omas and there wasn't enough material really to go around so they did a bit of a mix of the two materials and I think this worked out really well so this uh, is a Molteni and it's a Modelo 55S uh, you can also get this in the Omar Scarlet Red uh, material as well uh, this comes with an 18 karat gold medium nib with an ebonite feed and for me this again is just a perfect pen it's a piston filling pen holds uh, about I think it's about a milliliter to a milliliter and a half of ink and for me this is just a perfect writing pen I love how it writes so that's the 10 pens I have currently inked up for this week I think let's go and do a writing sample now so the first pen we're going to write with is the Visconti We'll do an ink swatch here. You can see that this is a fine nib, but it's still quite wet. And that's what I like about a lot of the Visconti nibs. So this is a Visconti Homo Sapiens London Fog. And it is a fine and it's a 23 carat palladium nib. Now the ink in here is Pilot Iroshizuku and it is Compeki, which I have actually just re-inked it with because it was getting a little bit low. I did think should I change ink but I just love that ink. And then we have this Caput Mundi and we'll do an ink swatch here and you can see it's a medium nib but it's a very wet nib 
So this is a Visconti Homo Sapiens Caput Mundi and it's a medium 23 cat palladium nib and the ink in here is Ackermann Dutch Masters that was me misaligning the pen to nib there or pen to paper nib to paper Steenwood Van Vermeer because I'm actually trying to look up whilst I'm writing this and actually look at my sheet of what inks are in which pens and then we have the Montegrappa so this is again quite a, a wet nib that you can see here now this is a Monte Grappa and it's the extra 1930 shiny lines dove and it's a medium and it's an 18 cat gold nib and then the ink in here is diamine earl grey and that's an ink that I do like I also like pilot washer Zuku Kirisami is another grey as well and then we have the stunning stacked celluloid here. So this is a very broad nib, as you can see, and also quite wet as well. So this is the Visconti Wall Street limited edition and it is a 1.3 millimeter stub and it's a 23 cat palladium nib and then the ink in here is diamine aqua lagoon and that's an ink that I do like a lot and we have the Visconti, and this is the Ecstasy Dowd or Dude, and it's only, I say Dude because O-U-D is pronounced Ood, so with a D apostrophe it's really Dude, or Dude. So this is the Visconti Ecstasy dude or doubt and it is a medium 23 cat palladium nib and the ink in here is one of my favorite purple inks diamine majestic purple and that as you can see is a very wet writing pen And then we have the Classic Pens LM1. And again, this is quite a wet writing nib, even though it's a medium nib. So this is the Classic Pens LM1, and it's the Flame Red and it's a medium and it's an 18 cat gold nib and then the ink in here is Blackstone Yuluru red and that's quite a dark red like I can probably put that red in in the um, Caput Mundi as well and actually it's not that dissimilar really maybe it's just a slightly lighter tone of red and then we have the Scribo 2 
and you'll see here that again this is quite a wet nib and I like this ink because it's not only a meadow grass green ink but it shades really really well so this is the right here Scribo 2 in the noble green and it's a medium and it's a 14 cap uh, gold nib and then the ink in here is uh, Akamon and it's actually uh, number 10 it's a Dutch Masters and it's Van Hoysum's Sap Grawn but that is a lovely shading uh, ink and it shades really really well on Tomoe River paper and then we have the Atelier Lusso Andromeda and this is a broad Yovo steel nib so it's a firm nib but it actually writes really wet so this is the Atelier Lusso Andromeda and it's the King Cobra and it's a broad steel nib and then the ink in here is a diamine skull and roses and if you like sheening inks that's an ink that is really nice it doesn't sheen as much as organic studios nitrogen but it's a, a high sheening ink but it's a german exclusive so you can only buy this in germany and then we have the visconti manhattan arco so we'll do an ink swatch here and although this is a medium nib and it is still a wet nib you can see here though that to me this really writes more like a fine to an extra fine it's very very fine so this is the Visconti Manhattan Arco and it's supposed to be a medium nib and it's an 18 karat gold nib but I'm pretty sure that is if you look at compared to um, the fine nib here I really think that this is bordering more to an extra fine nib maybe it is a fine um, but still it's more on the finer side of fine for me now the ink I have inked up in this one is Akamon SBRE brown but I still like how that writes uh, I would prefer that it wrote uh, more broader but um, I'm getting used to writing with that pen and I'm actually liking it a lot and then we have the Molteni so we'll do an ink swatch here and this is a medium nib so and if you think that the Visconti uh, is an 18 cat gold nib, this is an 18 cat gold nib. They're both made by Bok, the nibs. So this is the Molteni, and it's a royal blue Lucian's Modelo 55S, and it's a medium 18 cat gold nib. So you can kind of see the difference here between the two nibs. Uh, that's why I think definitely this is more of a fine nib. And then the ink in here is KWZ Gummy Berry. And that is a lovely ink. So I think let's just go through these uh, pens inked up one more time. We have a Visconti Homo Sapiens London Fog with a fine 23 cap palladium nib inked up with Pilot Wash Izuku Compeki. We have a Visconti Homo Sapiens Caput Mundi with a medium 23 cap palladium nib inked up with Akamon Dutch Masters Steenrude Van Vermeer. 
we have a Monty Grappa Extra 1930 Shiny Lines Dove with a medium 18 cat gold nib inked up with Diamine Earl Grey. We have a Visconti Wall Street Limited Edition with a 1.3mm 23 cat Palladium Stub Nib inked up with Diamine Aqua Lagoon. We have a Visconti XC Dowd or Dude in a medium 23 cap Palladium nib inked up with Diamine Majestic Purple. We have a Classic Pens LM1 in the Flame Red with a medium 18 cap Gold nib inked up with Blackstone Yuluru Red. We have a Right Here Screero 2 in the Noble Green with a medium 14 cap Gold nib inked up with Ackermann Dutch Masters. Van Hoysen's Sap Grand, and you can see the shading that goes on there in that ink. Now we have an Atelier Lusso Andromeda King Cobra in a broad steel nib, inked up with Diamine Skull and Roses. We then have a Visconti Manhattan Arco in a medium 18 cat gold nib, inked up with Ackerman SBRE Brown. And then finally we have a Molteni Royal Blue Lucian's Modelo 55S in a medium 18 cat gold nib inked up with KWZ gummy berry. So there you have it, that's my currently inked for this week. Thanks for watching, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye bye.